People with cancer are vulnerable. We don't know which way to turn. We rely on the information provided to us. My strength through this journey comes from my faith in the Lord. Deuteronomy 31.8 says, It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Cancer is a very lucrative business, both on the conventional and the non-traditional side. In this video, I'm going to discuss the various options presented to me from scientific-based medicine to alternative medicine and the research that I have conducted on my own. Once diagnosed with cancer, my cells were sent away for molecular testing to see which targeted therapy options I would qualify for. All of the testing options came back negative, aside from a couple clinical trials. I had decided to go with conventional treatment, chemotherapy, to extend and prolong my life as the technology evolves and new options come available, such as genetic therapy. I decided on this route because there is no scientific or medical evidence supporting the idea that alternative therapies can cure cancer. Unlike the regulated, uh, regulated pharmacy sector, the wellness sector lacks accountability. Additionally, some alternative therapies can be unsafe and may lead to harmful side effects or interact negatively with conventional medical treatments, increasing the risk of complications. Most importantly, what works for one may not work for another. I have known personally someone that took the non-traditional medicine route and is no longer with us today. Patients should be aware of the importance of participating in clinical trials. They play a vital role in advancing medical knowledge and developing new treatments. Finding the cure for cancer is a marathon, it's not a race. One documentary that I watched was a charity story of living with adenoid cystic carcinoma. She underwent radiation and chemo 19 years ago and has remained cancer free. Just as with scientific treatments, some have had success and some have not. Here are three of the non-traditional methods shared with me of which I did some research. B17, apricot seeds or kernels, otherwise referred to as Lytro, and it contains amygdalin, which breaks down into cyanide. 50 milligrams breaks down into 30 milligrams of cyanide, and a minimum lethal dose is 50 milligrams. Um, it attacks the cancer cells because they multiply more quickly than other cells. It could possibly stop your heart. Seizures are another side effect. B17 is used as a treatment in Mexico. It's not FDA approved. Why is it called B17? I have no idea. There is no vitamin B17, and there's no scientific studies to show that it cures cancer. Next, we have ivermectin. It's an animal dewormer, anti-parasite drug, targets nerve cells on the parasites. It's effective as it prevents cancer cell growth or spread promotes cancer cell death, is non-toxic to healthy cells. It's an excellent efficacy against chemotherapy-resistant cancer cells, so it can be combined with chemotherapy. There are published studies, but not well controlled. Um, human use product is safe, but can interact with other medications, may cause nausea, diarrhea, high blood pressure, contains some inactive ingredients that have not been tested in humans, not recommended by the CDC or the FDA. Um, ivermectin is in the beginning of clinical trial stages, most likely a comprehensive plan in addition to radiation or chemotherapy. And lastly, fenbendazole. It's a dog dewormer, kills parasites, been on the market since 1974. Uh, when they say nothing is gonna work, pull out all the stops, this is what people tend to turn to. Regression of tumor types in combination with chemo or radiation. Not a lot of human experiences with it. Um, its regimen is like three days on, four days off. It's not FDA approved. Uh, I did watch a documentary on Joe Tippins, who was told he was going to die 
He had lung cancer, nothing could be done. He took it for three months and the cancer was gone. He was also taking 1100 Keytruda clinical trial experimental drug at the time, in addition to curcumin and CBD. So it's not a standalone um, option. None of the treatments have a 100% guarantee of success, whether it's conventional or alternative. In summary, um, if after my chemo treatment and any clinical trials, I'm told that there's nothing that can be done, I would explore the cyanbendazole regimen and curcumin and CBD. Tune in next week when I head back to MD Anderson for another chemo treatment and a CT scan to see if the treatments are working. Thank you for watching. Please like, share on all your social networks, and subscribe to my channel for future videos.